Yeah, man, it's a lot of stress out there in these markets, player. Mm, coming from every single angle. So let's just take a quick, a quick look at what's going on right now. We got huge um, debt monetization going on by the European Central Bank. They're basically monetizing uh, government bonds from Italy and Spain. Uh, and Lord knows who's paying for that. Probably Germany. Um, there's a big battle that Germany wants huge reform in the European Union's financial system to basically conform to their rules since they're the ones making all the paper. So the solution so far is to uh, basically meet more often. They want to have a president to kind of discuss things more further. And I guess they fail to understand that the markets only understand who's going to pay the debt. Okay, they want to know who's going to pay who, who's going to get bailed out, who's not going to get bailed out. They don't care how much you cats get together and sing kumbaya. So uh, when Europe signaled that that's what they're going to do is create more bureaucracy, um, the market started moving lower. So let's see how everything's interconnected because we're in this phase now of, of society where everything is interconnected. So you got... Um, Italy's GDP is about 1%, so they're doing bad. Spain's in the same boat. And Germany was basically carrying the fleet. Um, but Germany's GDP just recently stopped to, I think, like a half a percent. So that means their economy is at a standstill. And a large portion of Italy's and Spain's GDP comes from uh, business that they do with Germany. Okay, so now let's see how furthermore this is connected. So... When you look at the United States and you look at these corporations that are wreaking mad profits as they lay off millions of people and, and continue to buy up and consolidate and do all kind of crazy shenanigans, um, a large percentage of their profit comes from over in Europe. Okay, so um, looking at what's happening in Europe in this slowdown, nine times out of ten, you know, U.S. corporations are going to get hit too, and it's going to be ugly. So that's why you're seeing these weird gyrations is because at any moment, you know, your, uh, your, the European Union can go through an extreme financial crisis. And when I say that possibility is real, it's literally within the, in the next seven days. <laughs> because you got to understand something, man. Once, um, you know, QE2, that money went over there to Europe. That six hundred billion dollars did not go here. That that went over to Europe because if you look at the banks that were buying up these bonds at the Treasury auctions, I think twelve of them were European banks, and so they were flipping those bonds right back to the Fed, and the money was going to those banks over in Europe. So they basically was um, the U.S. government fund the recapitalization of European banks through the Federal Reserve. QE2, okay, and nobody's being prosecuted for it. I mean, it wasn't something that the people voted for. It was a unilateral decision done by the Federal Reserve Bank just to show you just how much power they really have, man, over our society right now. Um, you got Rick Perry over there talking with his shenanigans. I mean, you know, that's the problem with people that come from Texas, man. They always don't know anything. <laughs> They, they come up mad character and charisma, but man, when it comes to intelligence, I mean, you know, is the whole state that way? I hope not, man, because, you know, it just seemed like they're ignorant. To think that printing money is a political thing makes me really understand just how stupid these people are, you know, because the printing of money has nothing to do with satisfying a political whim. But it has everything to do with keeping the financial status quo sustained and up and running. Okay, so it has nothing to do with politics. Politics is for the peons, the you know the people that go to these Tea Party rallies, these Democratic rallies, these liberal rallies, whatever kind of rally you want to call it, to go get brainwashed. You know, and it's just like you know listening to Power 106. You know, the the song is the same. The hook in every song is the same. They always want you to give them money. Because these people that run never really have any intention of getting into office. Their intention is to get in your pocket and basically take your money. Because your vote doesn't mean anything in this country anymore. It doesn't matter who you vote for. You can go back the last 20 years and look at this debt problem that we've had. And, you know, we've had this 
so-called economic growth. Uh, but if you look back 20 years, no matter who you voted for, the result was always the same. We were digging ourselves in a hole deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, okay? And it doesn't matter who you put in office this time. You can get rid of Obama if you want to, but the economy is not going to grow unless the debt of this country grows, okay? Because money doesn't exist in this country unless there's a debt behind it, okay? That's what interest is. Interest is somebody paying off a debt. That's what it is, man. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. So look at the scheme of things of where everything's going. You got the market gassed up. Everybody thinks that QE3 is going to get announced on Friday. But if it doesn't happen, the stock market is going to go bananas, okay? And not in a good way. So, you know, you better be watching these markets very, very closely and making sure that by, you know, close of business on Wednesday, Thursday at the latest, if you see no signs that there's going to be some type of monetiz debt monetization going on or mad bond purchases, considerably printing more money by Friday, it's not going to look good. Now, on the home front, you know, it's like a double-edged sword here. You got Bank of America. Okay, I've been talking to you guys about Bank of America for a while now. Go look at the stock price, okay? It's in flames, okay? The the bank is on fire. You got the CEO coming on talk shows. Everything's gonna be okay. Just keep investing your money. We're just thinking our core business. Man, your core business is not working, okay? I mean, Bank of America has officially turned into a cluckhead. And for you that don't know what a cluckhead is, it's the heroin addict or the crack smoker that, you know, goes and sells everything they own to go get a rock. As a matter of fact, they sell everything they mama owned to go get a rock. That's just how bad it is for Bank of America. They're selling off businesses left and right. They're issuing non-callable bonds. The last step, when you see Bank of America, and this is the nail in the coffin for them, if Bank of America even fixed their lip to come to the stock market to issue more shares, it is death. <laughs> it's going to be death, man. That's what it's going to be because the stock is going to be worth nothing. But, you know, they could try and pull a city bank and do a trickeration move and, and try and do a, you know, a, a reverse split and suck up everybody's money. Like, you know, city bank went to $40. Go look at what it's at today. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? These banks are worthless, man. They're just vampires sucking the life out of this country, man. You know, Bank of America whispering at Rick Perry's ear, we got your back. You know, that tells us exactly what's going on in Washington. Okay, so...